Welcome, I'm Ross Klein, and this tutorial is Advanced Photoshop Rendering Techniques Volume 1. First, you're going to start off with a sketch. This sketch has to be fairly um, well considered because you don't want to go through the whole process with a subpar design. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to bring a sketch into Illustrator, create vector work, then use a tool called Live Paint, which is mainly about color blocking your object. After this, you're going to bring it into Photoshop, and I'm going to show you how to do a fairly tight photorealistic rendering. Also, if you're unfamiliar with these programs, don't worry. This tutorial will show you how to do what you need to do. Um, all right, let's get started. All right, we're going to begin this tutorial by importing our drawing into Illustrator. Um, it doesn't matter how clean the import is because it becomes an underlay to your AI vector work that you will be creating of the watch. So what I do is I just open the file. Um, you can scale it according to how big you want your um, final drawing to be. And what I do is I lock it. So Command 2 or you can go up here and just object lock. And what this allows is you not to be able to move that layer. All right. So before that, what you want to do is you want to take that layer and you want to drop the opacity down to about, I would say, 25%. Lock it, go to your layers, and it create a new layer. And this layer becomes the layer that you're going to draw your vector work on. So then you just zoom in. I start with just a pen tool, okay? Make sure that you have your fill off and your key line stroke to black. And your stroke weight, I just leave at around 0.75 points. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow just some of these lines that I can see from my underlay. You click from point to point, and I'm just dragging. Okay? Point to point, and just drag. And I do this with every area of the watch, not particularly following whether it's a case or a button or, you know, the strap. All I want to make sure here is that all the lines touch each other. See where that separate line touches that separate line. And what, we're, what I'm going to show you afterward is using just a tool called Live Paint. But we must have all the lines touching in order to make use of that function. Point to point. So you kind of get this idea. You're just really following your drawing. And then if you need to fix a line, go to this white selection tool, select the end of the point, and just start moving. When we get to this little button here, I use my ellipse tool and just, you know, rotating at a touch. And same here. Ellipse tool here. And as you see, we have all these kind of serrated edges. And I go in from point to point, point to point. And I kind of rough it out a little bit first. And then I'm able to go back and really take a good look at it. Okay. Then to get these areas to look as if they're cut, 
I select this outside edge, go down to my scissor tool, and I just start cutting. I select from the areas that I cut, and I'll just delete them. Then I'll go back, take a point, and just kind of follow it back to how it looks on my drawing. Zoom out, kind of get a good look. And I can see from the drawing that I had a little bit, a bit more cut instead of rounded. So I'm just going to go in and cut it a little bit more with its shape.
After I'm finished applying color in Live Paint, I'm going to copy the whole image and then paste it in Photoshop as a smart object. You can see it comes in rather big, um, but it should relatively take the same size as it was in Illustrator. You see both pages are 11 by 17, so if I click on actual pixels up here, it'll show me how crystal clear the, the lines are, and if I click on print size, it'll show me the relationship between this and the 11 by 17 page that I set up. Just move this up to the middle of the page. Right now it comes in as a vector smart object. I'm just going to rasterize that layer so that I can affect anything that I want. Just zoom in a little bit. The way that I'm going to approach this is I'm going to start by lighting, then by shading. I'm going to apply different lights for the materials, whether it's rubber or metal. Then I'm going to go about doing sort of a glow effect um, for the dials. Uh, and then after that, I will be applying texture um, and showing you how it wraps around surfaces. So let's begin with first the case. Um, the case of a watch is just this outside area. And it depends on how many layers a watch has um, in terms of the terminology. So. As I said before, I'm going to pretty much choose a light. My light will stay somewhere up here, affecting different um, chamfers and bevels. So right here, I'm going to create a group that's going to be called case. Okay. I like to group these things this is just so I can affect it later and have a little bit more of a uh,
Okay, the face, dark shadow, and then you can add a little highlight around the edge. Okay. Now, I will sometimes, once I'm finished, come back to these areas if they look a little unfinished or I could spice them up a little bit and I'll affect them that way. Just gonna get these little pins here. Okay, make one more layer. What I'll do here is I'll play around with more of a filter. Just go, I'll fill in all of those. I'll go to one. I'll right click blending option this is going to pop up now I could look at a sort of bevel and emboss and you see even close enough like really close up you're getting a um, you can affect sort of the bevel of that one object and this is all just depending on how much you want to mess around with it Sometimes the gloss contour helps when you affect these lines. Okay. Sometimes you, you know you can color overlay. So if I wanted to play with some color, if my color is orange, I can affect these pins with the orange orange texture. Okay. You can see that every other one was affected because it was on the same layer that you were painting on. So remember, always save. <laughs> I'm going to save it as watch one. Okay. Next area I'm going to focus on sort of outside lip here and here make another folder I'm going to call that inside case create a new layer go back to your background layer select those areas you want to affect go back to the layer and once again, using shadows and highlights. Now I know I want this to be semi-polished. So I could come in here, create a new layer, and pull some white into it. Now around one edge of the white, you're going to want to make sort of a harsh edge. And the other one, come in here, kind of feather it out. Okay. Looks like this, I'm going to bring a little bit of shadow here. I'm going to accentuating how polished that is. How dramatic polishes. Here there's more depth. Okay. And I'm going to come down to this area and do somewhat of the same thing. Darker there, a little darker there. I'm going to bring in a new layer and then go back down to my white. Really punch that area up. Come in with my eraser tool. I'll just kind of find the point at which I feel the light would really set itself off. And then feather that area. And just like I did over here with that harsh kind of shadow, 
I'll do it here as well. Okay. Now see, even just like I told you from the beginning, when you brought it in from Illustrator to Photoshop, um, you're still going to have to manipulate some of the color, although you're doing the live paint. The live paint is more or less to show you what hues or values you want that area to be. You know, where you want your color pops. It's more of uh, organization than having it be truly final. Here I'm just going to try it out, bring in a little highlight to that metal, very subtle. Okay, and some things will affect both areas, so I select them both, allowing the selection to encompass all of that zone. Come back in, and you'll see right about here I have to make a shadow. And I'll put on a multiply layer. Multiply layer allows it to, uh, I'll show you real quick. See, I can still see the crease in that one area. It really paints over it without masking off or disguising any of the lines you have underneath. Here you can control the opacity. And I sometimes come back in, just make those up just a little more harsh, knowing that I want some more dramatic light. Okay. Last thing, I'll come into this little area, knowing that that's as well polished. And I'll hit it with a good bit of white. Okay. Take that little chamfer. I'll build some grays in it. more highlights um, that bring off that polished quality. Okay. I'm just going to survey, look at different areas here. I'll sort of back it up and just look at some of the shading. Okay. We'll come back and start affecting the dial. This is where you'll really start to see things pop. In here at the multiply layer. Really just paint right off of this, these hands. And that's going to show you the depth of the face. Okay. 
knowing that this is more of a an electroluminescent area it's gonna have quality of sheen even in these open areas, which I didn't select, you'll see depth as well. back to these to the dial on the hand. Select these orange areas. Carefully going with your magic wand. And select those areas. Go back at the dial and make another layer. I use my Alt or Option key. And I fill. I'm just gonna brush over it. Because I want it to maintain the same color, but I'm going to use an effect to it, making it pop off of that area. And you'll see right when I use my bevel and emboss, I'm going to bring the size down a good bit. See, and as I bring it up, you should be able to see see what's happening, the difference in those edges. will affect the light as per what I had it before. That should be good at that stage. Sometimes I have to let the computer sit a little bit while it affects those areas. Okay, we'll come back in to these smaller, more me mechanism areas. And just kind of punch them up. See it bring in a pretty harsh light. Affect it again, and you can really start to get that metal feel. Okay. Go back to my first layer. See, I painted directly on that layer. So I'm going to undo, go back, create a new layer, and then redo that paint. It has a little contour to it, so I'm going to go around with my eraser and just erase where I believe that contour would be. I'm just showing some depth and separation in that part. I'll put 
put a little shadow and harsh edge to it. Come around, this is the chamfer in the glass as to where the dial is placed and sitting. So the way I treat glass is pretty much the same way with metal. Come around and give it some really harsh light. So the more detail you put in, the more attention you're going to have to pay to each individual area. Again, erasing. That's where a little highlight would be. You come in there. Just place a little white down. In this little interior area, which I know is chamfered in, so just hit it pretty harsh with a dark color. You're going to have to go sort of back and forth a little bit to understand how much contrast you want against other areas. You can see from a distance everything's starting to make sense. Okay, one thing I see within these hands is just the depth of this hour hand. was a little harsh so just bringing it down okay I come in here do the same thing put down a little base find my harsh areas where I want to show it having a lot of depth I'll come in with a harsh white bring my eraser all the way down and get a harsh edge and then feather the opposite edge okay And right down there should be the deepest, sort of darkest part. And then just remember to save. Okay, so now I'm going to affect some of the artwork just within the dial. I'm going to go up here minimize that folder, make a new folder, and call it artwork. Okay, create another layer under it. And here's where I'm just going to brush a little bit of some uh, some different light with an orange. I'm going to my orange palette. And just really it's about finding the right tone. This is going to be electroluminescent as well, so it's going to seem as if it has a little bit of glow to it. So I'm just going to brush 
some different tones of orange. Just see a little variation. So I'm going to go in here and then create some more depth in this area since there's some overlays you know within the dial I just want to show that there is something lying behind it. So I'm going to go in pretty tight. Just sketch around this one border. Put it on a multiply layer. Once again, that's just the ability to see lines behind while creating depth. Now, one thing you could try and do, so I'm going to create another layer for this. Select this whole area, fill it, and then using your blending options, you can use a bevel and emboss. And you can try and get some depth here using a little more simplicity, not having to go in with uh, individual paint brushes or anything. But you can see up in this top edge, if I start to maneuver that around, you can get diff different depth quality. I don't need so much white, just more of the dark, so I'll bring that screen white down. I'm just going to let the computer process. You can see it even gives depth within some of those numbers. And thinking about manufacturing, if those numbers were screen printed on the back of the glass, you would get a certain bit of depth popping behind it. So it fits fairly well. I'm going to do the same thing with this number two. Another create a new layer. Use your eyedropper tool, fill it with the same exact color that was placed in previous and live paint in Illustrator. And then use your blending options, level and emboss. And then you just really have to play around with the depth. I see you know using some color overlays or some gradient overlays you can get different effects with that as well. Okay. Now I'm just gonna hit some of these other little details rather quick. Some of these pinned areas. And this just in construction method. Um, is really about holding the case together just with with some pins or with some screws or you know whatever you design. Okay, gonna go in here. Just give a little quality of depth and light. And doing it with this as well. Here again, white on the, more white on the top, and then 
little darker down here. Take some of that white off. That white off, so that white off. And here on the inside chamfer, again like we did on the, the pin in the middle, so we're going to treat it similar. Darken the edge. Just given that that quality that it's more of the caved chamfered area. Okay, gonna back up. Do the side areas. And make a new layer. adding a little bit of definition. Okay, and then our pins on the inside. Use the same technique of the Bevelin Boss like we did in this area here or these areas here. Go back to our blending option, bevel and emboss and really mess with the size. Bring in the white all the way up. And then here I'm gonna try a little bit of a overlay. See, it gets pretty hot in the bottom. See how black that gets, and just a little out of the shape that I want. And sometimes, you know, you look at something and you just don't think it really pulls off what you are trying to get. So. I'm just going to fill these in with a lighter color and get back to them a little later. Try one thing. Try to see what this would look like polished. That's not bad. Give it a little hard edge. Okay, so what, I, what I'm going to do is once I selected them, I'm going to deselect just a portion of it and then run a hard wipe at that edge. And do it to each one of them. And then that should finish those off. All right. So now we're going to go to the side of the case. This is where these pushers are. Just going to minimize that folder. This was really 
going to select this outer edge of what is the crown. Make a new folder and call that crown. And then a new layer. And this is also going to be machine metal, so it's not going to take on much different of a characteristic. Just maybe a little shadow. Okay. I'm going to go into these little areas, which are more of the coves. You'll see a, you know, a darker gray. Create a new layer. I'm just going to run a little of that shadow just to get the brush size to where you would like it. Just a little shadow right at that edge. That should be good. I'm going to go on the edge of this crown piece. And I'm going to make this just a little sort of detailed black chromed insert. Come back with white. Fill it. And then you can see like a really hard reflection and the black kind of usually will give you that look of uh, kind of a chrome polished black. Okay, and then I'll come back and get this one area. Fill that with black, and then maybe you know just a little kind of hint of a highlight of some sheen. Here you go. I'm going to show you one really good trick. You see, you can't really get some great definition around that edge. So here's probably the most valuable trick that I love to get those simple edges. Is I go back into Illustrator, and I find that edge. Now since they're the same scale, you know, I didn't scale it up once I brought this into, uh, into Photoshop. It should be just the same exact size. So watch this. I'm going to take the I'm going to take the fill off of this line make it fairly small, say 0.25. And I'm going to make it white because that's more or less what highlights are. I'm going to copy that line and go right back into the, into Photoshop application. Once again, paste. And then just drop it right over top. Rasterize that layer. And you can see the white lines there. Now if it's not enough, I just copy and paste it again, bring it right next to each other, having two of the same lines, and I just merge those two layers. I take my erase tool and just at a certain spot, kind of erase the white line looking as if it's a if it's a highlight. And then once you step away from it, you can really see that thin white line does a lot to that area. And I'm going to do that again to different areas, you know, when I look back and see if I need any more um, detail. Now I'm going to focus in on the pushers. So, once again, like we were doing with every piece, 
we're going to create a new folder, a new layer within that folder. I'm just going to come and hit some shadow. Where I know the pusher is by. Seems about right. And then I'll get that little piece up there and drop that to completely dark. And then same with down here. I'll make my shadows and highlights. really testing out where the shadows are somewhere I can get most of my depth even here there's a lot of orange that's going on within the band so I figure that once the light hits it and we have these machine metals and polishes that we're going to get a little bit of orange that hits the inside of this area too I'm going to go in here, drop the opacity down a good amount, and just put some orange in this area. Come back with a brush and my erase tool, just take a little bit out. Then I know there's going to be kind of crease in the case, just because the metal is bent in the back. So just going to throw a highlight, showing at that point the metal bends. Okay. Come back here, add a little shadow. And then get this bottom surface. Let's see, I can go back and alter any layer this way. So, just noticing that white is killing a tiny bit. No, it seems to be good. Okay, now I'm going to focus on the strap. So, first I'm going to select probably what will seem to be the most dramatic change within the strap is the shadow behind it. So, I'm going to add a new Folder. I'm going to call this strap. Add a new layer. I'm going to take that color by using the eyedropper tool. Change this layer to multiply. And you're going to see what that does. You see how it kind of gives that orange hue? So you can either use that method or you can use multiply, change yours to a certain gray. then start to use some shadow. And you can see it kind of muddies it up a little bit. So another technique is also to change the orange to a more darker kind of brown within the same hue. And then begin to shadow. It gives it a lot more rich tone. Go in again, bring it darker, and get to this top area. You can see the depth you get by that. 
We'll go in here, take this surface, add a new layer. We'll come in here and add a little highlight at the bottom. And come back using my Mic Multiply tool. Let's give it a little more depth in that front. And you'll see, I'll take some of that color down. So I'll just change the opacity of that so it's not so rich. Seems to be good. I'll add a new layer. Just as that part hits the ground, I'm going to hit it with a little shadow. Okay. One thing I know is the way that I designed this, the strap dives into the case. So I'm going to have a pretty nice line right there. And then as I showed you before, I'm just going to take my eraser tool, subtract from the end so it's not so harsh. And use that as more of a highlight edge. I'll bring the opacity down a little bit. I'll come in, select that area, and as I told you before, the strap goes into the case. Same method, taking over brown, using my multiply layer, and then just applying paint there. Take a little wood away, add a new layer. And then a little bit darker in the area where it begins to dive in. Now as I back away, you can start to see that all the shadows are making sense. The highlights are making sense. It's beginning to really sort of come forth. Um, as a realistic rendering. I'm just going to grab the sides, add a new layer, take my multiply layer, or my, my multiply, and then just bring the opacity down. Now this part is going to chamfer back, so I know it's going to be pretty dark.
Okay. I'm going to focus in on this metal area here, which is the buckle. So once again, I'm going to create another group, call this buckle, and add a new layer to it. I'm going to want this to be somewhat of a machine metal or a chrome. So make it pretty dark. You'll see I'll come in here with a pretty strong white. Use my eraser tool, bring the hardness up. And then just sort of brush in the area which I can see. Say pulling off chrome or polish. Sometimes it's going to take a few a few passes at it. Okay. And then maybe add a little bit of a harsher shadow. Here as it returns back into the piece of PU, which is a polyurethane. It's just what I'm specking out as my strap material. Okay, I'm going to come in here, do the same thing. You see, I started painting on that background layer again. So just make sure you're sort of paying attention to what layer you're painting on. And it's just the ease of being able to change it later in case you want to do different colorways or things like that. I'll show you the ease of being able to do those types of things. Come in here with a harsh white. start to take away a little bit of what you've covered up. Sometimes I, I peek away a little bit, minimize the window, uh, zoom out and see if the material looks like it's pulling off what I want it to pull off. sides a little bit. Let's give me some definition. Okay. And this bottom area, and I know it's most likely it's going to be black.
right. Looks fairly decent. And I'm going to start going in, adding any little details that I see. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm just going to call this details. And any time I really find a detail, I'll just go into that subgrouping and add it. And here you can just see I'm starting to just play with some of these. levels here. And right, you know, I'm really trying to get this luminescent quality to it. So it does. It takes a little bit of kind of tweaking and playing around and seeing what you can get out of some of these functions. Again, just seeing some of these functions and what they're doing to some of the color that I'm picking. Okay. Let's get that transfer quality. Once again, um, uh, kind of peer back, look at these little areas that are a little unfinished. And that's within the strap. Come back here. and add that barrel quality. Same here. Throw a little darkness. Now I'm going to use that trick of just going back and forth between Illustrator and Photoshop to, uh, to bring some of those highlights out a little more. It's going to affect this one last area. Okay. One area I really see that might need a little pop is that just around the case and around the pushers. So I'm going to kind of centrally focus on those two. So, once again, find the lines in which you want to affect those highlights. Copy, get out of the group, paste them, bring them to white. Let's put them at 0.5 now since we needed to make some changes last time. And I'm just deleting where I know the highlights 
really won't be. Okay. And those are the lines that won't. I'm going to go to where that pusher is. I'm going to change. Get into that group. Put down as a smart object. And as a smart object, you're going to have to rasterize it. To uh, affect any bit of it. So you just see really nice highlighted edge. If you find it too harsh, go into Gaussian Blur and then you can just kind of tweak it a little bit. Go back into Illustrator, grab the other pushers, lines that you want. Copy, paste, bring them to white, 0.5, copy, open up Photoshop, paste, and just align it to where you need it. Once again, rasterize that layer. And then any highlighted area I don't need, I could just erase manually. And then go in here, do a little Gaussian blur, and that's done. So just those little small details really help pull off um, just the different qualities that you can get. I also said I need to focus a little bit of that highlighted edge around the, the case, and that's this edge right there, 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 there.
Okay, I almost finished the drawing. A um, few of the last remaining things that I told you I was going to show um, is sort of the glow details within the dial. Um, also, strap texture on the back side, as well as the background. I'm going to start with the background. Um, I use a fairly simple background, usually blacks and grays, um, really sets the object off and doesn't complicate um, what you're supposed to be viewing. So I will show you sort of a traditional background I use. I just brought it into this one file, and then I'll go into more detail. Okay, so as you can see, mainly black. Um, there's about four layers that are shown. Let me get rid of these extra ones. Start off with just using pretty much a gray. I used right here an 83% gray. And just started bringing in maybe a tiny bit of a lighter tone. Um, and this just will help kind of separate some of the, the high values and low values. Here I added a little bit of a shadow. The way I did this, I'll show you, is went more for a black and then just kind of sketched out a little shape underneath the watch and came in and cleaned it up a little bit. Just kind of feathering it out a little bit. Okay? And then added a fairly dark black hinting around the sides, just on the left side. So you see here, left side's more black, whereas the right side shows a little bit more gray. And then to really pop the watch off, I used just a little hint of a gloss. And I'll show you how that's done. I just set up a box like this. I take a white brush and I just go along the edge, similar to that, okay? Come back with my eraser, and I feather that out. Feather the edges, and there. And that's really uh, the background that I use. So, now I'm going to go more into the texture of the back of the band. So I'm going to make another layer and I'm going to call this texture. Okay. Now if you do have other DVDs of uh, Mark Kokovex, you'll find in one of them there is a uh, patterns and texture library and that's what I'm going to be pulling from. This is just one of the folders within some of his DVDs in that collection and I'm gonna choose this one right here more of a zigzag pattern and I'm just gonna apply it not too heavy but what I do is I copy and paste it to Photoshop I'll make a kind of a object similar to what a band is and then all I have to do is select the eyedropper and really select on any of these textures that are already created. But I'll select on that one. Copy, make a new layer, paste. Comes in fairly big so you can even scale it down however big you want the texture to be. And then I'll take this Make sure you rasterize the layer so you can affect it. I'll take it and I'll warp it. And I'll really just follow the contour of this band. You can see me just sort of pulling points. And you're just going to have to really eyeball it. Um, and see how it kind of wraps around whatever shape you decide to use when you're designing your own watches or objects or whatever it is. 
Okay, so make sure you fully encompass the space. Okay. Once you get it, press enter. And here, all I'm going to do is go blending options, bevel and emboss. I'll use a pillow emboss um, for this so it gets both ends. And then I'll just play around with some of the light that they're using. And then just wait for it to be affected. Okay. So you can see the textures on there. You can even go back if you find it in kind of tighten areas, and that's not how it's supposed to read. Okay. And I'll go back to my initial layer. select the areas I want it to affect to. Just those is good enough. Go back, select inverse, and then press delete. And it'll get rid of wherever the texture is not supposed to be. Also, it seems a little dark, the lines, so I'll go up to hue and saturation, and I'll lighten it up. Also, bring the opacity down. And there, from far away, you can see that there's, you know, some texture in it. So maybe put a little bit more darkness in it. Okay. And there's that. Next thing I'm going to show you is how to make these dials glow. So I'm just going to make another group, another folder, and I'm going to call it glow. Here, this is fairly simple. Um, what I do is I take the color that I'm using, and I go in and I select a much lighter color. Okay, So pay attention to sort of that cream. I go in here and let's see what linear dodge does or lighter color you'll see I'm just sort of highlighting some of these edge edges so I use a linear light and I'm just gonna sort of brush and give a quick look at what what this is doing and then I can come back in take away take away take away and you start to see this real kind of sheen quality that's happening I always sort of over um, over brush something And this way I can, so it's so much easier to sort of come back into it and affect it. I'm also going to get this where this 2 is. And then... So, there as well. And get it around the edge there. And then these little areas here. And if you find you have too much light, just go back, reduce your size of your brush. OK, 
है So it's really about just massaging those those areas. And once you pull back, you can really see that glow really take an effect. Let me just take away a little bit where you don't want to get hit. pretty good. I even put a little glow over here. And so we just did the texture or the band, we did the background, and we did the glow. Alright, one other thing I'm going to show you is just putting an image, skewing an image onto where this black area is. Let me move this up. And take that. And make a new layer and call this I'm gonna call this screen. What you can do is you find you can find different patterns, you can make patterns in Illustrator, you can do whatever, you can even take images and apply them to the face of a watch, face of anything. So right here I have this image like this. Okay? And what I'll do, similar to how we did the texture, is I'll take this and I will warp it. And I'm going to follow the contour of my shape. Okay, so you'll wind up, you know, warping a lot of these lines. So just be careful that it doesn't get too skewed or you're not, you know, warping it at its right areas. Okay. Bring this in a little bit. And, you know, it just takes a little bit to line it up exactly where you want it to be. Okay, you can see it's still a little off. Sometimes you can get away with that by just warping it one last time. Now to really set it apart, we're going to go into these features. We're going to bring it to the background. Okay. And we're just going to play with these little different filters. You can see here. one layer I duplicated it and then I 
made another duplicate. One being on the multiply layer, one being on a soft light layer, and then one being on a screen layer. Okay. And then from far away it gives that it gives a real quality of depth and that glow is really pulling off for us. Okay, and then you know if you want it to become a little bit more intense you can duplicate the whole thing and have another copy, but it's just a little too much, so I'm gonna kill that other folder. Okay. All right. Once again, looking at that glow, if you want to bring it down a little bit, bring it down. Okay. Really, only one last thing I can think of that's really going to set this up. I'm going to go back to my Illustrator. Go back to my original file. And originally on my line art, before I started live paint, I had these little details. And I got rid of them just because using the magic wand around these things really sometimes causes some havoc in um, just airbrushing everything, painting everything. So I keep these separate and then I can bring them in a little later. Let me bring this up a little bit. Okay. Copy. Once again, I'm going to go into artwork, create another layer, paste, I might even have to bring this layer above the rest of them. You can see the black really plays off then. I'm going to also rasterize this layer. And I might try and see what a motion blur does to this. So what I'm going to do, looks like it's going to be OK. I'm going to duplicate that layer, allowing us to have its original lines there. And then go up to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur. Just see what that looks like in the distance. I look a little fuzzy. So I might just come back in the Illustrator, select all of these, bring the stroke weight down. Oops. Bring the stroke weight down and then bring it back. What I can do is then maybe play around with the drop shadow. That might sort of do the trick. Okay, 
a little more detail is there. Everything seems to be good. If you want to even go back in, where we were creating highlights on edges, selecting a few more edges to pump some highlights into, selecting that, copy, bring it to white, copy again, and then paste into Photoshop. And then just take your eraser tool and erase any areas. that are a little too harsh. Okay, and there's one other area we can do the same thing to. That's just asking you to rasterize that layer. Since that's rubber, just bring it down a little bit, do it to the other area. Remember, copy, paste. Asking you to rasterize again. And then just use a subtle opacity, bring it down, and show that it's rubber. And you can see how kind of quick this approach is. It's very easy. Uh, it's sort of it's funny when, whenever. You know, people come up to me and ask me about renderings or anything like that. I'll show them this technique because this technique far surpasses, you know, spending all the time making exact brush strokes or um, just really spending a lot of time on something that is uh, relatively easy. Okay. We're going to throw a little glass on there. I'm just going to look at some of these, these layers that are unused. Just getting rid of some of them to clean up my space. Okay, so I'm going to call this Lens Reflect, and I'm going to take a white. And I'm just going to kind of fill the area a little bit. It doesn't matter, you don't have to have any borders or anything. And I take a harness, bring my diameter to a to a percentage I want it to be at, and I'll leave like a little sweep. You see how there's just a little bit of white on that side? I'll do that, come back in, and then once again I'll feather off sort of the rest of this. Bring the opacity down. And, you know, you can take this and you can move it wherever you think the reflection best fits. And see there, you can get the sense that there's a you know, piece of glass that's over.
just want to play with that. Mingle one last time. Okay. Taking a look at these last layers, these are all details, like I was saying before. So I'm going to take all of these and put them within my details. Okay. There's my screen. That's my lens. And there's my glow. Let me make my one group for that. Okay. Let's see anything else? Just gonna bring a little bit more glow to that part of the face. And one last one is the shelf where the lens sits. And I just go back in the Illustrator, get my lines. This is another one that goes into details. Take it and then see where it's going to sit. And this is the area, you know, that you look at uh, a watch, the raised area where the chamfer is on the on the glass. That's what this is. And it's just going to be really kind of subtle. back in, gather this one line for that really, really sharp highlighted edge. Duplicate it just to get a little bit more white. And I'll come in here. I'm just going to see where is the best place to put a highlight. Right. 
can take that outer glow off of that one filter. And I'd say it looks fairly complete. Okay, I'm going to be showing you two different ways of doing metals. One with a brush finish and one with a polished finish with a reflection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my background image where my vector smart object layer is. I'm going to select the area in which I want to affect with a brush finish. To go up, I made a new folder called Metals After. I'm going to make a new layer. And I am going to fill it with white. Okay. Then I'm going to go and change it to a multiply effect. I'm going to go into filter, add noise, and make sure you're on monochromatic and uniform. You can bump up the amount and you'll see how it affects the brush texture. So sometimes you might have to go back and forth just to find the right amount of noise to add. Then after this, I'm going to go to Blur, Motion Blur, and in changing the distance, you can see what type of finish you get along with playing with your angle. Find around an angle of 4, does it? And you see, you have this brush finish. I usually just bring the opacity down a little bit. And you can see from a distance you get that brush look. So now I'm going to show you, I'm going to get rid of this layer, and I'm going to show you how to use a kind of polished look with the reflection. This really counts on you getting a good image. Um, of let's say a sky or for this instance I got a pretty shiny helmet and you can see that it's a pretty good res um, so you're not dealing with anything that's a little too pixelated also what I'm gonna do is you take the image and you're gonna rotate it and use the area in which you think is um, best So for right here, I'll take this image, rotate it, and you're just going to line it up. Drop the opacity so you can see the reflection that will happen in this area. Okay, so I like where it's at. I go to, again, my background image vector smart object layer click on the areas I want to see polished go back up to the picture select inverse so that it gets rid of everything that's outside of the area you want to affect and press delete and you can see what you're left with is that reflection now you can play with your opacity according to how much you want that polish to show up and what I do is I come in and I'll just get rid of some of these areas that really don't matter and there you get a really good reflection um, edge and that is the tutorial on how to render a watch to be you know, semi uh, photorealistic. Uh, thank you very much for joining me in the session and I look forward to the next time I get to show you more processes. Bye bye.